All right, this is the 2020 AOIME, also called the AME 2. It's the American Online Invitational Math Examination that was held uh, yesterday, which was Saturday the 6th, I want to say. Yeah, Saturday the 6th. Uh, this is problem number one. Let's get started. Find the number of ordered pairs of positive integers mn such that m squared n equals 20 to the 20th. The n might feel like it's gonna throw you off, but it's actually kind of irrelevant. Um, we really just wanna know how many perfect squares we can make out of 20 to the 20th. So we write two squared times five to the 20th, and that's going to be two to the 40th times five to the 20th. And the goal, because basically however many perfect squares you get, then that's gonna make a unique value of n for each one of them. Um, and so how do we know how many perfect square factors you can get? What you want to do is factor a 2 out of the exponent. Um, this is 2 to the 20th times 5 to the 10th to the second power. Now, because this is to the second power, the total number of factors or divisors of this number will be a total number of perfect squares. Um, so for example, we could have 2 times 5 to the 3rd in there. That's one of the factors of this. And if I square that, it gets 2 squared times 5 to the 6th, which is a perfect square. But this number will play the role of m, and n gets whatever's left over. Again, we just count the total factors inside. Because of this 2, all such factors will be perfect squares because they're getting squared right here. So we just want to know how many there are. And if you haven't done this before, it's basically prime factorization. It has to be prime factored. So for example, if you have, you know, 15 to the fourth times, uh, I don't know, two to the sixth, it won't work with this setup because 15 is not a prime. You need everything's in terms of its prime. And you're basically, it's, it's basically the fundamental counting principle. You're choosing which factor of this to use, and your choices are 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1st, 2 to the 2nd, all the way down to the 2 to the 20th. And so that's going to give you, don't forget the 0, that gives you 21 choices. And this one's going to be 5 to the 0, 5 to the 1st, all the way down to 5 to the 10th. It will have 11 choices. In the future, you don't want to write this. I'm just writing it for those of you who are unfamiliar. Um, Basically, you just want to add 1 to the exponents. So there's 21 choices for the power of 2 times 11 choices for the power of 5. Each of those will create a unique m and n. So we just have to multiply this, and we're done. The rule for 11s, uh, for two-digit numbers, it works for three-digit, but it's a little more complicated. It's us I usually only apply it for two digits. Um, so you just add these two numbers, 2 plus 1, put that in the middle, and that is the product and is the answer. All right, this is the 2020 AOIME problem number two. Let P be a point chosen uniformly at random in the interior of the unit square with vertices 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 1. Uh, let's make sense of that real quick. Um, you have the first quadrant, basically. So we don't need to draw the rest of it. You can see the rest of it going over this way. This will be 1, uh, 1, 1, and 0, 1, so 1, 0 here. Um, all right, continuing on. The probability that the slope of the line determined by P and the point 5 eighths, 3 eighths is greater than 1 half can be written as M over N. And it's just going to continue on. You basically need to find that probability, right? It says uh, M and N are relatively prime positive integers. Again, relatively prime means no common factors. They don't, they're not going to simplify, basically, the fraction. Um, and then you find the sum at the end. But for now, how can we do this? Let's just look for a line that goes through 5 eighths, 3 eighths, and has slope 1 half. We can just use point slope formula. So y minus y1, which will be 3 eighths, needs to equal 1 half times x minus x1, which is 5 eighths. Um, I'm going to go ahead and distribute here. So I get y minus 3 eighths equals 1 half x minus 5 sixteenths. Um, I'll make this 6 sixteenths and add it to get y equals 1 half x plus 1 16th, because 6 16ths minus 5 is 1 16th. So let's divide this up into eight 
equal parts we can think a little bit. Halfway, halfway, and halfway, and then four more halfway points. Here, 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 and here. And do the same thing here. Halfway, 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 and then cut all these regions in half as well. So five eighths, three, four, five, one, two, three, would be about right here, and one sixteenth right here. And if we connect those two, it will pass through like this. Okay, so this is the line through that point that does have slope one half. Now that we have it graphed, what do we do with it? Well, we want a slope greater than one half. So if P is above this line on this side, it's going to be, you know, not one half, be less than it, or it'll be negative. So we have to be below this line, but does that mean it's this whole region here? No, because if I put P on the other side of this vertical line, it will now be a negative slope with P. So P has to be in this region right here, Let's just find that first, and then we'll think if that's the only part that matters. So we already know, what is this? It's a trapezoid. These are vertical lines right here, and this height of it, right, it looks like this. This is 1 16th, and we know what this is. We can just plug uh, 5 eighths. We actually know the point. It's the point 3 eighths, so the height. Uh, if you don't understand that, the y value is the distance off the x-axis. That's how you should think of it a lot of the time. So this is going to be 3 eighths, and to find the area of a trapezoid, it's the average of the bases times the height. So I'll make this 6 sixteenths plus 1 sixteenth is 7 sixteenths. To average, you have to divide by 2, which is the same as multiplying the denominator by 2, and then times the height, which will be the x value, actually, the distance from the y-axis, which is 5 eighths. This gives 35, 240, and 16, 256. A 240 from 8 times 30. Okay, so that's what this region is. Is that it? Are we done? No, because P could be above the line like here, and this will also have the same effect. So we need to go up from here this way, and we need this whole region too, because everything in that region will also produce the same value. So we know that this is 3 eighths, that means this is 5 eighths. Notice it's a trapezoid again, and this will be 3 eighths this time. We really just need this height right here. How are we going to get that? Well, we just need this ordered pair. Uh, we know that the x value is 1 on this line, so let's plug 1 into here, and you will get the y value is 1 half plus 1 sixteenth. Turn this into 8 sixteenths plus 1 sixteenth, and this will be 9 sixteenths, that's this height here. We don't want that. We want the part up here, which is 1 minus 9 sixteenths, and that's 7 sixteenths. So now to find this trapezoid, exact same formula, average of the bases, 10 sixteenths plus 7 is 17, uh, 17 sixteenths, and then you're going to cut it in half. So it's 17 over 32 times the height, which is now 3 eighths, and you're going to get 51 uh, over 256. Now we add that to get 86 over 256. We will simply cut in half because 2 obviously goes in and these are not relatively prime. So 43 over 128. Adding 160 in this and 11 more is 171. That is our answer. All right, and now for the 2020 AOIME problem number three. The value of x that satisfies, this is where it gets weird, log base 2 to the x power, that's the base, of 3 to the 20th power is equal to log base 2 to the x plus 3 power of 3 to the 2020th. So in other words, if I wrote this as log base a of b, a would be 2 to the x plus 3 and b would be 3 to the 2020th, just to simplify what we're looking at. All right. Um, can be written as m over n, and then it's going to go on with a common ending. By now, if you've made it to the AOIME or the AIME, you should be familiar with these kinds of endings, and we don't need to read it right now. You can read it again at the end to double check. The main thing is find out what x is, because that's what it's asking for. Find x, it should look like a fraction when we're done. Let's just find x and worry about that part later. So, we don't usually see exponents in a base. It's not very common. I mean, it happens maybe sometimes, but it's pretty rare, especially on AMC and AIME. Maybe I would probably say my guess is less than five times in 20 years, if it's been that common even. 
Okay, so what do we do? Well, how are we gonna get, I kinda wanna, you kinda wanna think about it like this. What do I not like? I don't like a base with exponents. Is there a way to remove it? Well, that's what we use change of base formula for. So change of base formula, if you look at log base A of B, it's basically that I'm gonna make the B go up, the A go down, and I'm gonna choose a base for each one. So it'll become log base C of B over log base C of A. That's how I remember what the formula is. So then what base do we wanna use for this? Well, how are we gonna get the exponent out if we don't use base two? See, the thing we wanna use base two is because let's see what happens. Log base two of three to the 20th over log base two of two to the x. There's a rule for logs. Uh, if you're not really comfortable with logs, you should get comfortable. They appear almost every year, it seems like. And a lot of times, it's just basic manipulations that you're familiar with, basic rules once you learn them. Um, and so if you have log base A of B equals X, for instance, I call it smiley frog face is how you convert this. It's A to the X equals B because the conversion to exponential form, it looks like a, a stuffed animal I had as a kid that was a frog. It had a big smile and big eyes, and that's why I call it that. Uh, nobody else really uses this. It's my own made up weirdness. Um, so A to the X equals B. Then if we do that here, it's two to some power equals two to the x. Well, that some power must be x, so this expression is just gonna simplify. In the future, you can just remember if you have log base b of b to the x, this cancels and the x drops out. Okay, so uh, moving back to our problem, um, this is going to be equal to log base two of three to the 2020 over log base two of 2 to the x plus 3. So now we'll rewrite it. Um, this x is going to drop out and the x plus 3 expression is going to drop out. Um, we're also going to take another rule for logs. Again, a lot of times it's just basic applications of log rules. You should know log base a of b to the x, the x can travel in front. The exponent of this part can travel in front and be written like this. It's equal to log x times log base a of b. Um, I'm not going to prove all these things right now. You can probably find that on Khan Academy. So uh, this is what we want to do. We're going to do it with the power of 20 right here. We're going to pull it in front. So we get 20 log base 2 of 3 over x equals 2020 log base 2 of 3 over x plus 3. And there's a whole variety of endings you can have. It doesn't really matter. There's probably six different ways we could finish this problem off using different manipulations or, or calculations. Uh, just pick the one that works for you and you'll maybe lose 10 seconds if you don't pick the fastest, but don't waste too much time trying to make the perfect simplest way. Okay, but you might notice if the numerators of these both have log base two of three, we can just divide both sides by log base two of three. And since we notice we can do that, we might as well divide by 20. So if we divide by 20 on both sides, we'll get one over X, 20 goes into 2000, uh, 100, no, uh, yeah, 100 times. 100 times 20 is 2000. And it's gonna go into 20 one more time for 101 over X plus three. Now all we have to do is our old familiar cross multiply, X plus three equals 101 X, subtract to get 100 X equals three, and x will equal three over 100. Now we go back to this. It is in the form m over n. Are they relatively prime? Uh, three does not go into 100, so yes. Um, find m plus n, a very common ending to the problem, finding the sum of a fraction when they're relatively prime. In fact, it happened on the last problem as well, and it's gonna happen again. So uh, three plus 100 is 103. That is the answer. See you in the next set of three.